Well, I did something different. I noticed that I was working just in the back part of my studio and I began to see the front part would just be storage with all this stuff. So I said, okay, you've got to start making a dent because I only have one more day here. I've got to go back to work, uh, to my office on Thursday and Friday and do evaluations and finish those up. So I said to myself, I wanted to do more pouring on this painting, but I don't want to drip it and I'm getting old, er, and I didn't want to be on the ground. So I built this dam. I took this table that was in the studio already. It had all my encaustic stuff, which I can still use as an encaustic table. But I built a dam around the whole thing. That was this morning. Just found some scrap wood and built it up a couple inches and extended it with these two pieces because the width of the table is exactly 48 which is the same width as the canvas which would be too tight so I built it so it's 40 or 50 inches which is just enough space so now what I can do is I can put the canvas on the table It's hard to do this without my helper here. Uh, let me just sit this down for a minute. Look at my supplies. There. Let's look at that for a minute. Uh. Okay. Sorry. Wish I knew how to edit. Okay, so now the canvas is on the table. And built it up. And Put some plastic down, as you saw. And I'm not going to be dripping a lot. There's like a, hmm, the back to this. I just didn't want it to get it on the floor. So now what I can do, I've already prepared some colors, is to just pour paint without it. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna pour some more over here. Cause I want just blobs now. And I can still move it around, but it's much easier for me to tilt it because it's uh, like waist high. can also start to maybe move it around the color just a little bit but I kind of don't want to do that I want to, the uh, yeah more like that I want the um, solid color to interact with the thinner ones let's see now okay that. I'm going all um, Helen Frank and Fowlerish. Thanks Helen. And so now I can walk around and pour another color. And see this is still going to be all underpainting. That's what this is. But What I want is to have these colors kind of like stay pretty pure, but I don't want them to roll much because I still want all those linear elements to interact. Now this is going to take quite a while to dry because it's so thick, but that's all right. I've got plenty of time. Let's see. Now I have um, this color this weird pinky color and what I'm most interested in is let's see you can go off the edge I don't mind that not at all let's 
go over here. All those artists that went before, paving the way for us to work this way. I thank you. Yeah, this is good. So I'm gonna drag a, a fan, I've got a tall fan over there that I can get to, um, put some air on and what I like about this is uh, that yellow will still maintain some of its thickness and dimensionality um, and I don't know if I want that green to go I can always put it up on the, the edge of the dam a little bit so that it moves I can even let it go off the side there and stop it see before I was avoiding the sides because I really didn't want to get my floors dirty um, even though it's different than my upstairs studio which I had wood floors and I had put plastic down but some of the plastic still allowed the paint to seep through and I felt inhibited. These floors are all cement, cracked up, crazy. So if I get paint on them like I did in another room, I don't mind. I can always just paint those floors, these floors. But the ones upstairs in my other studio, I couldn't paint. Landlord didn't want that. So, and that's his building, so. Um, I kind of like this biomorphic shape. Okay, well I just wanted to show you my new tool my painting dam which is very roughly hewn roughly put together I'm no carpenter but it, it it allows me to get this job done 